Cox Show. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348. Rover's going to have the first bit of details for you. Between 7.30 and 8, you'll be able to win your first key next Monday morning, and then you can win keys all day long, one of which will fire up uh, this Harley. So 7.30 and 8, uh, one week from today with Rover. You'll have your first key, and then he'll tell you when you can win subsequent keys. I know Stansbury's going to have one. I'll have one. I'm not sure all the times we're doing it, but that's how it'll roll out next week, and you'll have another chance to win at WMMS.com. So Keep that in the back of your mind. We'll be talking about it this week, but it will begin in earnest next Monday for you to win the buzzard bike. And we're going to be out, too. Um, so we'll have stops where you can come by. But just have that on the brain. Um, I was. Some people were laughing at the New York Police Department because whatever artist they commissioned for their pride uh, thing... It looks like they got one over on him. Now, this could be completely coincidental, but people were having a lot of fun with it on social media. Uh, The commissioner of uh, the NYPD tweeted an image of one of their NYPD patrol cars that are all gussied up for Pride Month. This is the stuff Poundcake likes, where they do it for one month. Yep. (laughs) July 1, they're out there scrubbing and unwrapping these cars. So they very proudly tweeted a photo of NYPD cars in rainbow logos. Happy Pride Month. The whole thing. Uh, The NYPD shield, the NYPD logo, all of it in uh, the colors of the rainbow. Promoting universal acceptance and inclusion. All good stuff. But some people did notice that the artist uh, or whoever did this underneath Happy Pride Month in fine print, you can... Not trying to be hidden, but you'd have to get pretty close to the car to see it. (laughs) All colors are beautiful. The acronym for which, A-C-A-B, is uh, very similar to an acronym that you saw a lot during Black Lives Matter protests. You know what A-C-A-B stands for? I don't. You know what ACAB is? All cops are bastards. Mm. That's the acronym for that. So never heard of that before. It could be, if you, you never saw hashtag ACAB during all the George Floyd stuff mm-hmm. and all that. So this could be coincidental. It might just be, um, it might just be an accident. But people were congratulating the artist who managed to get the NYPD to put ACAB on their own vehicles. But nevertheless, now they didn't obviously wrap their entire fleet of squad cars So I'm curious which neighborhoods these are being deployed in. Probably the stereotypical neighborhoods, maybe. Williamsburg, Chelsea, uh, where else? East Village, maybe. I mean, I doubt they have these cars rolling through the Bronx to paint with a broad brush. But uh, people are having a good larf over that. And hey, again, maybe it is coincidental I don't know that they do that with any Cleveland Police Department cars anybody seeing squad cars out there that have rainbow colors on them no anybody got the budget for that what's that anybody got the budget for that no hmm you're probably right well because I wonder if the NYPD actually paid for it or if there were some I mean they have plenty of people that would probably give donors like they they are they would get donors like, if think of a town. That's but I have to think that there would be, if that were the case, there would be people in the greater Cleveland area that would be happy to donate to something like that. Well, if there would be a city that would do it, I guarantee it would be like a city like Oberlin. But they're they're far too small to have something like that for 30 days. They would just have their car. Plus, you don't need it because the college is right there. I mean, if you're in a college town, they're taking care of all of the messaging anyway. You're, you're you kind of you're kind of a, you're you're in, you're within that community, and everywhere you turn on a on a college in a college town, you're going to see that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't. I guess I probably didn't notice. I'm sure there is campus security because every college has some type of campus security, and they probably have campus security cars. But I've only noticed OPD. I don't think I ever realized that they're. They, I think they're probably. Like, you know what OPD? 
Yeah, you know. Hey, you know me. <laughs> Half hearted. He's a little slow. Yeah. He kind of trailed off. He's like, I don't want to do this, but I couldn't help myself. So, no, uh, you ever get uh, rolled up by OPD when you were growing up there? Yeah, well, it depends. Because th- there was times when I was ki- when I was a kid that I would they would like pull out in the street and we would trick or treat. So they would have like l- their little squad cars, um, and they, we would do that, and I would trick or treat out of their trunk. And then, well, they- I meant in a way that made you nervous. Not not that's really. that's them just doing like community. But I mean, you were a snitch anyway, though. So, but there were times. Well, that's <laughs> the thing, though. I- He's on that's the payroll. The the we we had we were going through Plum Creek one time and. It, it, it's like a creek off of the bike trail, and for whatever reason, we were running. I think we were, because we heard of a rumor, like, back in the woods, there was this really old house. There's a lot of old, like, colonial homes in Oberlin. All of those houses are old, like, part of the Underground Railroad or whatever. Um, and I heard a rumor, uh, me and my brother and his friends heard a rumor that there was a house in the woods that was like bare, looked like a barn, and some lady died back there, and it was a old witch, like you know Blair Witch House. <laughs> so we went back there. We weren't supposed to go back there. It was blocked off, and then we heard that secure someone called security, or like someone called the police. So we had to the run. The witch house has security. Too? <laughs> well, it was back in the it's war- warlocks are yeah. doing security at the witch house. I think those grounds are still maintained by someone because it was gated off, so someone was paying attention to it, uh, and. Someone had called the police, and we were running for our lives through the woods, and we went through, the only way to get out was through the creek, Plum Creek, and it, we didn't know how deep it was. None of us had ever walked through there, so when I first get in, there was, like, it was up to my ankles, and that was fine. Then it got up to my waist, and I was like, I don't know how deep this thing goes, so we just had to keep running, and luckily it didn't go past, like, it was, like, maybe up to my belly button, and then we ran through and we heard, oh no, five zero. So then I really start running, and then I look like a swamp monster by the time I get out. But he, that's the sound of the police. It, it was probably not even like a problem for him because he didn't even have his lights on. He didn't, he didn't have a siren. He was probably just patrolling the area. I don't know if anyone called the police, but he, it was so a non-factor that he didn't have his lights on. So we walked through the other side of the woods after we got past the creek, and then that was it. I never got stopped. In fact, I shadowed Oberl- Oberlin Police Department. Uh, for um, what what was it for uh, career day? So I just all know. Cody's are bastards. <laughs> I just, I sat he was along. really sucking up. I did a little sit along. I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. I'm like, watch people get arrested. Someone ran their someone ran their bike into a car. <laughs> not the opposite way. The car didn't hit the bike. So an uh, Oberlin College student was just that that's not. <laughs> crashed into the side of a car and she was effect <laughs> we pulled up he was like okay we got a call you know siren going i was like you're excited i was like yeah here's some action and we get there the girl she's sitting on the side of the car holding her head like oh i'm so hurt i'm like oh man he ain't hit you come on you wanted you wanted like, someone to be hit by a I car was dead or I was like, yeah i was like oh the window's not broken uh you know no blood she, he, she was like i think i have a concussion i'm like you bitch like i was in seventh grade you want to see some mangled torso yeah. Listen. Yeah, i, I know like, that's the exciting part i was like we're going to a crash site i was like i found out the code of the i want to see no internal hemorrhaging i can't see that <laughs> I'm, I'm in there telling my friends. I was like, "Yeah, we had a six five zero one. It was a six five zero one. Like, I can't tell you that. That's that's police code. She's that using the code. <laughs> I think I'm bleeding internally. That don't count, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> come on. I want to see some. You ain't gushing. Prove it. Messing like, some ribs, pointing out your back. Let me tell you how how chill the scene was. When we got there, the guy was like, "Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. I, I, I just I didn't see her." And she and she was like, "Ew, it's okay. I, I should have been paying more attention." Um, and then she got up, the police officer put her in the back of the car and even took her bike and put it on the back of his, his squad car. I'm like, man, this is stupid. It's nice patrolling in a low crime town. Yeah. So she just got out, took her bike off the back and went and told her roommates like, guys, I I hit a car on my way home. I'm like, I might be concussed. They're like, don't go to sleep. The whole town is three miles. I'm just going to take a nap. She could have walked. I always think Oberlin is farther west than it is. It, it you're, is. You're South Amherst, yeah, in Oberlin? Uh, South Amherst is Oberlin. <laughs> That's right, south of Amherst. Yes. Yeah. I always think you're out by, like, Vermilion or whatever. I don't know Oberlin, why I think that. but Oberlin is the weirdest town in Lorain County. Like, it's just, it, it seems like it's not supposed to be there because it, it is its own little world. Well, it's a college town. I, I, yeah, it's, it's a little just, pocket of, you know. It's not like any other town in Lorain County. It's just real odd, but... 
I really see how weird it was once I like moved out of there because you can be in your own little bubble. But I liked it. it it's a beautiful home, or, or it's a beautiful town, and you know there are a lot of beautiful homes and a great place to raise families. But it's just odd for where it is in Ohio. <laughs> it's very liberal. Well, yeah, there aren't a lot of conservative college towns. Fair enough. Yeah. There was a traffic. Speaking of the NYPD, I was reading about a traffic cop who's suing over those courtesy cards because he was getting retaliated against for writing tickets for people with courtesy cards. I don't even know what this is. Okay, you get pulled over. If you ever oh, meet a cop like the or something, of they the give yeah, oh, FOP, you FOP. You got a sticker on your yeah. card, and a benevolent association, whatever. Now, in New York, I could see why one of these would be awesome because. You know, NYPD covers all five boroughs. Out here, if a cop gives you one, you have all these different municipalities. You know, when I first came to Cleveland, I had cops giving me courtesy cards left and right. I'm like, I'm not going to use these. A, I look like a douche. B, you get some guy who goes, I don't know him, writes you a, t- writes you a ticket for even more. They're like, I'm Cleveland police. I don't know a guy in North Olmstead. I mean, I guess the in- they're trying to do you a favor or whatever. The-, the-, the intent, I guess, is what it is. But this guy was writing tickets for people that were showing him cards. And he's like, you know, part of it's business for this guy because he's like, you know, we use the money from traffic tickets. (laughs) That's a big source of revenue for any city is traffic tickets. But he's like his bosses were retaliating against him because uh, he was writing tickets for people that would show him the courtesy cards. He's like, you know, just because a guy mows your lawn, because some of these people are pretty indiscriminate. You know, they have stacks, and they're like, hey, if anything happens to you, give me this. Because I think half the time they know they don't work anyway. Unless you unless you probably, like, know, know a guy. Hey, Officer Starkey is my neighbor. That might be something. But if you're like, hey, this dude gave me this card. Hey, was at a bar. I got drunk next to a cop. <laughs> right. He gave me this card. Hey, I was hanging out at a cop bar. Yeah. Gordon Square. I see card after card. You're not allowed to write any of them up, he said. We're not supposed to be showing favoritism when we do card stops. Then we shouldn't be <laughs> giving out courtesy cards to everybody we meet. He was told by his superiors that the union wouldn't support him if he sued. And so uh, an NYPD cop, first off, you're not... You're a traffic cop. Like, you're trying to get out of being a traffic cop. And now this guy's like, yeah, but, I mean, I shouldn't be getting in trouble because every Thomas, Richard, and Harold is showing me a uh, a courtesy card. He said he was warned by a lieutenant that one of his stops pissed off some very important people, right? Right? You think if people were really important, they might have like, um, you know, city the size of New York, you might have the local equivalent of like, you know, diplomatic plates or something. But I don't know. No, I think he's probably referring to like the people who handed out the cards. If they were like higher level in yeah, maybe. the mm-hmm. department, those were the people that were pissed off. Yeah, maybe so. Like, I give these out for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Sure did. He said three days after he complained, he was off traffic duty and he was on a night patrol shift. Hey, get over here. Did you get? Did you write this guy a ticket? Yeah. All right, you're working nights for the rest of the time. He's like, all right. Cut. It's what? weird that cops are traffic enforcers at all. It's it's surprising that that's not separate. Well, they're trying to make – there are a lot of cities that are trying to do that. Like I think it should the, tra- be the traffic enforcement unit is yeah. completely different. They're like, why are cops pulling people over for broken taillights? Right. Right? They're like, there should be a completely different unit that's doing that. So they're not shooting a guy because he has a... So, yeah, that's been the... In a lot of places, that's a big issue right now is traffic... You know, traffic uh, sector should be handling that. But right here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland State University is a school that does a lot of research into racism in, in traffic tickets which this cop who's suing is using to kind of um, support his position. He's like, there's a lot of traffic ticketing that's a 
There's a lot of bias in it, not just racial, but all kinds of different bias. And so there's a status bias if people have courtesy cards that they happen to get because they knew somebody. I just never, ever felt com- – I've gotten a lot of them over the course of my career. I've never felt comfortable using one because I just never knew how to – do. hey, I have this. And well, a lot of times it probably would have gotten me – first of all, I'm not getting, like, traffic tickets nonstop, but it's like uh, it, it probably would have gotten me out of a few, but it just felt so weird. It for sure would have. I used to get them from my uncle and you would use them. Now, that's my uncle – but it was still convenient and nice to have them. <laughs> yeah, but that was a family member. Hey, my uncle is Lieutenant my uh, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. I assume he, he was he was Lieutenant Jimmy. Mm-hmm. That was your uncle, right, Jimmy Squire? Yes, Lu- yeah. Lieutenant Jimmy. Well, his, Lieutenant Jimmy Squire. He's monk, my uncle by marriage. So Lieutenant Monkle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Sorry, Monkle Squires. <laughs> You see a guy just walk by mm-hmm. in a t-shirt that says Beard Lives Matter? You should get yourself one of those. That'll hit right. Why? Hey, Beard Lives Matter. Not, was, not want, bearded. Yeah. Beard <laughs> Lives Matter. He was I a want, black dude. I want there to be less beards out there. He, oh, you want there to be fewer? Yeah. Why? Oh, so you stand out. Maybe he's there a gay guy with a, wife, with a beard, like a cover-up wife. I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deeply closeted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's, there's shades of difference, but that's okay. So beard lies matters not for you. Mm. All right. I've uh, got to take a break here. Ooh, what's this? I am not gay. I have relationships.